part 7 of Kerala PAC Polytechnic Lecturer Previous Year Question Discussion. Okay, so we are going to see some more questions in this video. First question is, we will be seeing the questions on board. The first question is, total internal reflection can take place when light travels from A. Air to glass B. Glass to air C. Rare to denser medium D. Denser to rarer medium Okay, so the total internal reflection is happening when the signal is traveling from a denser medium to a rarer medium. What will happen? It will be totally reflected back to the same medium. Okay, so when the signal is traveling from or the light rays is traveling from the denser medium to the rarer medium, it will undergo dash total internal reflection and also you should be knowing that this is the working principle of optical fibers the total internal reflection is the working principle of the optical fibers correct answer is option d second question an xor gate produces an output only when two inputs are a high b low c different d say Let's see the truth table of an XOR gate, okay. So, let the inputs are A, B and the output is Y. So, when will the XOR produce a 1, okay. That is when the XOR produce an output high. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Let this be the combinations. So, the question is, an XOR gate produces an output only when output means it there is an XOR gate produces an output means it is when it is producing a 1 that is a question okay first you should understand the question the question is asking when an XOR gate is producing a output of 1 so when 0 0 is been given to XOR gate what is a symbol it is a symbol a b and y this is the symbol of a xor gauge so when 0 0 is given output will be 0 0 1 output is 1 1 0 output is 1 1 1 output is 0 so clearly when whenever your inputs are different the xor gate will produce an output 1 okay so it is not actually given in the question that when an xor gate is producing a output 1 but we should assume that the question is asking when we should try to understand that the question is asking when the XOR gate is producing an output is equal to 1. That is a question meaning. Okay. So, the answer is option C. Whenever your inputs are different, it is producing a 1 value. Okay. Correct answer is C which is different. Next question. So, the third question is. A binary number 10101 is equivalent to decimal number dash. We will do the conversion here. So, 10101. Okay. We need to convert this number in binary form to which form? Decimal form. So, to convert a number from binary to decimal, we have to multiply with the powers of 2. So, first let us write the position values. It is 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay. And now convert it to 2 to the powers. 2, 2, 2 and 2. Now, for whichever number there is 0 above it, just ignore them. And add the remaining numbers. That is 2 raised to 4 plus 2 raised to 2 plus 2 raised to 0. Now, what is 2 raised to 4? It is 16. 2 raised to 2 is 2 square that is 4 plus 1 that is 21 to the base of 10 is the answer. Okay, correct answer is option D 21 is the answer. So, in order to convert a number from binary to decimal, you have to first write the position values. Then take the position values as powers of 2. Then multiply. Okay, before that, whichever number is having a 0 on top of it. See here there were zeros and we have ignored these numbers and the remaining numbers you just have to add. Okay. So 
this is the procedure and it is a very simple procedure to do a binary to decimal conversion. Here the answer is option D. Moving on to the next question. Question number 4. Fourth question is, CMOS circuits are extremely used for one chip computers mainly because of their dash. That is, we know that CMOS circuit or CMOS construction is used for keeping off all the miniaturized versions on a single chip. Okay. So, what is the basic property they are actually making use of? A. Low power dissipation. B. Low cost. C. High noise immunity. D. Large packaging density. So, this is one of the very important advantage of a CMOS circuit or CMOS construction. That is, they can have large package densities. So, they can be integrated onto a single chip. Various units can be integrated onto a single chip. That's why, or that is how we produce the chips or the boards we create. Okay. Correct answer is option D. Fifth question. Fifth question is from center diodes. The phenomena which causes reverse breakdown in center diode is known as A. Hall effect. No, it is not Hall effect. B. Breakdown effect. There is no actually effect called breakdown effect. C. Avalanche effect. That is the correct answer. Avalanche breakdown is actually happening when the center diode is operated in the reverse biased mode. Okay. And there will be a breakdown happening due to this avalanche breakdown and it will act as a voltage stabilizer there is a video on zener diode so please do watch that video all basic things i have explained in that video okay i'll share that in uh, description box it's link i'll share in description box okay in that video you can see a very clear picture of zener break breakdown zener uh, working some important questions also and that too in a very exam point of view okay you don't need to uh, like go in too much detail only the needed things i have explained in this in that video okay so, correct answer is due to the avalanche breakdown. Avalanche breakdown, the Zener breakdown is actually happening. Okay. Or the Zener is working as a voltage regulator in the reverse bias condition. Correct answer is option C. Okay. Sixth question. Sixth question is from CRO. So, if you are preparing for any competitive examination, you should thoroughly study at least the basic principles of CRO. While examining the question paper, I could uh, understand that the CRO is a very, that is a very interesting topic and it has been many times asked in this question papers. Okay. So, whichever question papers I have ex examined, one question I found from CRO. Okay. So, please do refer the topic if you are preparing for the polytechnic lecturer or for any examination for that matter okay so the question is the horizontal plate of CRO is supplied with dash to observe the waveform of the signal a sinusoidal wave b cosine wave c sawtooth wave d none of this okay so you should know that in a CRO the waveform is displayed in a two-dimensional form there are two planes there is an x plane there is a y plane in the x plane we are having time and that time is not externally supplied it is internally generated inside the cro okay this is a very important topic or very important thing and why is having the amplitude or the voltage values of the corresponding signal or the waveform okay and this y value we are getting from the externally that is from whichever signal or whichever input given to the CRO we are getting the y value the time but we are internally generating okay and for generating this time or for feeding the x-axis we are actually giving a so tooth waveform okay A waveform like this okay you will be feeding to the x-axis or the x 
plane okay so the horizontal plates are supplied with a what waveform it is a so tooth wave okay and that is for representing the tile okay correct answer is option c is the correct answer okay next question seventh one Seventh question is, a full order can be made of A, two half orders, B, two half order and a not gate, C, two half order and a or gate, D, two half order and a and gate. Correct answer is, with the help of two half order and or gate, we can have a full order. Okay. So, if you draw the block diagram of a full order, you can draw it like this. In a rough form, I will draw it for you. Okay, Half adder into which you are going to feed A, B input. Then, take it out. This you are going to feed to, feed to another half adder. Then, you will get the sum here okay and this output you are going to take this will be the carry out of b so this will be half order b this will be half order a and this is the carry out of a this is being fed to an or gate and you will get your final carry out here okay and also you have to give the carry in here okay carry in here okay so this is how you can draw a rough diagram for a full order so in that uh, diagram you can see that there are two half orders and one or gate so with the help of two half orders and, or, and an or gate you can realize the full order so if you have uh, doubts like the circuit diagrams or anything just google for the topic you will get a lot of images regarding the circuit diagrams and everything okay so make a study with the help of your internet you will get a lot of uh, topics or articles regarding the topic whichever you are going to search okay so anyway here the answer is two half order and a or gate is the correct answer so the option that is coming right is option c okay next eighth question Okay. The next question is from electronic instrumentation subject. The degree to which variation in the output of an instrument follow the input variation is referred to as dash. A. Sensitivity. B. Linearity. C. Hysteresis. D. Accuracy. So, if the output is varying in correspondence with the input, then it is called linearity property. So, there is a separate playlist for electronics instrumentation and measurement. In that, I have explained all the basic characteristics of the instruments. So, in that characteristics, one of the very important characteristics is linearity. All the other options, that is sensitivity, hysteresis, everything we have explained in that video. Okay. So, if you have want to have a reference, please do watch that video. Okay. So, here, if the output is varying in correspondence with your input variations, then it is called linearity of the device. Correct answer is option B. Okay. Next question. So, next question is a very basic question from H051. The H051 microcontroller is of dash pin package and a dash processor. That is, how many pins are there in the H051 IC and it is a dash bit or a dash byte microcontroller or a processor. Okay. So, it is a 40 pin IC, okay, and it is a 8 bit, that is 1 byte device or 8 bit. It is a 8 bit processor with 40 pins. Correct answer is option C, okay. Tenth question.
Okay. So, 10th question is, which bus is bidirectional? A, data bus, C, control bus, D, C, address bus, D, multiplexed bus. Correct answer is, see, out of the given buses, data bus is the only bidirectional one. For address bus, you only have to fetch the address. See, whenever there is an address memory, you only have to fetch that bus from the, that is, that address from the memory. So, it need not be bidirectional. Okay, so you only have to fetch the address from that address memory. So, it cannot be or it need not be actually by direction. But the data memory or the data base, data memory, it's not by directional, but the data base, okay. So, the data base has to be by directional and that is an essential thing. It can be, this can be bi directional or unidirectional, but the data base can be B or must be bi directional only. Correct answer is option A. Next question. 11th question. So the question is Wien bridge oscillator circuit uses A. Negative feedback, B positive feedback, C both negative and positive feedback, D none of the above. Correct answer is it can use both negative and positive feedback. Okay. So, we have done a video on the Wien bridge oscillator. We have discussed actually all important type of oscillators. Clap, call pits, all the oscillators we have discussed. RC phase shift oscillator, everything. So, please do watch that video. I will share the link in description. Okay. So, it can be using a feedback which can be positive or negative feedback can be used. Okay. So, if you examine the I will give the image of a Wienbridge oscillator here. Okay. And also, when seeing an oscillator, in an oscillator, there is a, an amplifier circuit and a feedback. Okay. And, so this, this is the circuit diagram for a os basic oscillator. There will be an amplifier, there is a feedback. And this feedback can be either positive or negative. Okay, for the case of Wienbridge also, it can be positive or negative. Okay, so here correct answer is option C is the correct answer. Positive or negative can be. Okay, so these are the questions which I have included in this video. I am really hoping that these questions were useful. I have tried to give maximum explanation for each question. So that it should be useful for those people who is watching the videos. Okay, so you should gain some information other than or rather than just listening to the answers you should gain some information along with the answers that is my try when i'm when i'm making every videos okay so if you found the video useful please do give it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends and also if you want more videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching